Today's topic is about death, misery, bleach, drunk stick figures, Jorm, Doodle Tones, Illini Guy 34, Gem 99 Show, Just Call Me Henry, Clay Pot, Ryan Rhino Mills, POG Professor, Half Boiled Hero, Scarlet Otaku, Chirp Rocks, Cinematic Venom, Screaming Cats, Crashing Cars, Other Random Sound Effects, and Time Machines. But mostly it's about Jorm responding to a video Doodle made. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Jorm, Jorm, Jorm. Never would I have thought that I'd come back to talk about you once again. I thought I was done talking about you. I thought I could just let things go after the manga common and mega dupe dramas. I thought that you had fucked up enough. But once again... My hate boner is growing and I can't resist. I must have your juicy transgender vagina inside of me. Now you're going after videos from the past. Videos that have already been talked about to death. Hey guys, did you know the spice him in the ass later on? Now before people say that it's a retrospective series, because it's in the title, just know that I can fucking read. As I am about to explain to you twats, I watched the video and it's nothing short of false advertising. This video is a commentary. And commentaries can also be used for the purpose of retrospective, just like how they can be used for criticism and entertainment. This debunks nothing. It doesn't look back on it at all. It doesn't really go into depth about when the video first came out. <coughs> the reception it received from people. <laughs> it's later on already. Jorm, you acknowledge that she going after videos from the past that have been covered to death. Bandwagons is the main point of her series, so shouldn't this really speak for itself? The people who made commentaries on it? Covered by half Boil Hero, Clay Pot featuring Ryan Rhino Mills, TOG Professor, and Scarlet Otaku in a one-shot. Whoops! And any drama that may have happened as a result of it. Yeah, the keyword here is may, implying that Doodle could have possibly had no drama to talk about in the first place. In fact, there actually was no drama between Gem and Henry's co-op, and it was just them making a shitty commentary that got covered by a lot of people, thus making your entire point unnecessary. And when it was mentioned, it was either brief or shoehorned in, lacking any elaboration and just went on to address the video. Or, here's a thought, it didn't really need that much elaboration in the first place. Seriously, all the stuff you bring up could easily be addressed in under a minute, and it was. It really doesn't matter if the explanation was brief. And... shoehorned in? How? Would you mind explaining or are you pulling shit out of your ass at this point? With points that were already made two years ago. If you want a good example of this, Ryan and Clay's video in the description from 2015 will provide you with just those points. Except, no, Doodle's video was not a direct copy of Claypot's co-op with Ryan because Doodle also took points from Half-Boiled Hero's commentary and TOG Professor's commentary and even expanded upon Scarlet Otaku's one-shot while neglecting some points from Clay. Now, one may make the argument that I'm proving Jorm even more in the right considering his next interjection. You could have made something interesting, Doodle. Actually go in depth about the history of these bandwagons. But no, all you did was make a commentary with regurgitated points that don't need to be heard again because they've already been made. And even with some new points thrown in there, like the one where you cited a study regarding when kids learn about sex, is it really enough to warrant an entire video given that it's two years old with many points already being made towards it? Really? But hear me out. When you add all these two-year-old commentaries together, the runtime would amount to an hour and four minutes. Doodle's video, which is essentially a combination of these four commentaries, abridges it all to 18 minutes. Even if the viewers could watch other commentaries that say a lot of the things said in Doodle's video, that still doesn't mean Doodle's video doesn't have a purpose, that being to give a general gist of the problems Gem and Henry's co-op had in a nutshell. On top of that, I noticed a glaring dose of hypocrisy. You quote-unquote blamed Gem for the way the video turned out, you rarely brought up Henry for being at fault for a large part of the behind the scenes problems that the video had. So I went back to Doodle's video and I counted up how many times Doodle pinned the fault at Gem and Henry. Gem was called out 15 times and Henry was called out 10 times overall. I don't know about you, but that seems fairly equal to me. Also, I love how you're getting onto Doodle for not putting Henry in the title when earlier in the video you were calling her out for having a misleading title. 10 out of 10 logic. The reason I say this is hypocritical is because of the responses, or lack thereof. I don't see anybody in the comments pointing this out. The reason I bring this up is because Guy 34 got shit from people for saying that Jim was responsible for many of the behind the scenes issues the triops suffered. 
Where's the outrage towards Doodle? Yeah, I'm totally not being a hypocrite because I have a bias for Doodle Tones. So you're telling me that it's a problem for Illini Guy 34 to point out that Gemma is responsible for much of the behind the scenes problems of his triop, yet it's perfectly acceptable if the almighty Doodle Tones points out that Gem fucked up in his video with Henry. Either you're being willfully ignorant or you're a hypocrite. Fucking pick one. How about I pick the option where it's neither? The difference between Doodle Tones and Illini Guy 34 is that Doodle was an outside source while Ernie was an inside source. Doodle was observing what went wrong, and Ernie was analyzing the pre-production of his tryout while trying to take a beating for his video. If Doodle was trying to disown a co-op but ended up bashing another party in the co-op most of the time, then I'd see where you're coming from. But not only is that far from the case here, but it's far from the case, period. I thought this one was going to be really fun, considering who my co-op partner was being someone who tackled race issues in the most dead set way he could, it had the ingredients of a good video, two smartasses responding to one of the worst videos I've ever covered. But the mistake came in when I joined the riff. Nice try, but try again. And already, I hear the autistic screechings of, well hypocrisy doesn't make you wrong. Jump on one's case and give the other a pass for doing something of the exact same nature? I think it does make you wrong in this case, if you believe Ernie is wrong for blaming Jem, even if he is the one who caused problems behind the scenes. Okay, can I explain something about double standards? Double standards is like if there are two people in a debate arguing different sides, but one person decides to stand with their side as well as their opponents by arguing for both of them. Now, a debater shouldn't do that at the end of the day because they're supposed to pick a side and stick with it. However, like every argument ever, each side can have legitimate points to back them up and who's arguing them doesn't and shouldn't matter. It's commentary 101. This is why the two quoque fallacy exists. Counter arguments and rebuttals are what prove someone wrong, not double standards or hypocrisy. Now Doodle. You covered that triumph, so you know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure he knows everything about that triumph where Gem only made 12 actual points throughout the entire video, unlike this situation where not only was it Gem's video, but Gem was in the majority of it, thus giving her more stable ground to stand on either way. I need a drink. Now Doodle Tones, I am challenging you to a debate on Skype. Come and defend yourself against what I have said in this video face to face. Come and prove me wrong. Just you and me. One on one, mano a mano. Yes, let me ask you to a one on one debate, a platform that is completely private and thus cannot contain an audience that could gather information from said debate, while I'm on a public platform where I have numbers of defenders to back my side. That doesn't sound manipulative at all. Psst, hey Kjorm, in case you weren't aware, I was being sarcastic. Anyways, I'm done with this video, so it's time for final thoughts. Jorm, you're normie. Can I call you Jormy the normie from now on? I have had it with these motherfucking normies talking about my motherfucking memes!